First and foremost, this is good value for Sam Howell. And you look at the quarterback trade market and like people wanted to say, oh, well, Mac Jones went for a six. There's no way that Sam Howell is going to get a fourth or a third or anything in return of value. You might as well just hold on to him. And if that was the case, that he wasn't going to get a fifth or a sixth round pick in return, then you absolutely should have held on to him. But here's the thing about Sam Howell and Mac Jones. Sam Howell's way better, was way more liked in the locker room, and he costs a lot less. Mac Jones was a first-round pick. He makes real money. Sam Howell was a fifth-round pick. He makes NFL dirt. Be nice. I would love to make Sam Howell's salary, but I work in radio, not as an NFL quarterback. So, relatively speaking, the value was much higher for Howell, both in terms of the monetary return and the impact on your salary cap, and, oh, by the way, the quality and caliber of player that you are getting. I would much rather have Sam Howell than Mac Jones, and clearly so would the rest of the NFL based off what they ultimately got traded for. Uh, Howell gets, uh, in return, a third rounder. Now, it's not straight Howell for third rounder. It's pick 78 and 152, which is a fourth. Uh, in return, you have one of the first picks in the fourth round, number 102, and a sixth rounder, 179, going back with Howell to uh, to Seattle. So ultimately, it's kind of like trading him for a fourth but here's the other part of this. Here is the, hey, let's go a little bit deeper and talk about what this value really is for Sam Howell in return in this draft. This is, by a lot of accounts, about a 90-player draft. Not that there won't be guys that go higher than 90 that are maybe even NFL superstars, but nevertheless, NFL starters. But the depth of this draft, because of the confluence of COVID years NIL keeping a lot of guys in school longer and kind of the end of the COVID years now in 2024. Um, the last remaining guys who were like 60 years still have them. I guess for a couple of more years, you might have some guys who were freshmen and lost their 2020 season or freshmen and lost their 2020 season that still have uh, another year or two beyond what you would think they would be in terms of in terms of schooling. But at the end of the day, a lot of guys have stayed in school longer and the, the depth of quality in this draft, there is a drop-off, a, a lot of people think, around 90 guys. So you had pick 102, which if someone fell out of your 90, cool, great. But now you've guaranteed it. Because now you got pick 78 to go with the rest of your picks. Uh, you got 2, 36, 40, 67, and 78. And 100, by the way. You got that compensatory pick from San Francisco that came in the other day uh, that we we learned uh, was was pick 100. So you got 2, 36, 40, 67, 78, 100. That is six picks, really quality football players, that you are likely getting in the top 100 picks. That is incredibly valuable. And that pick 78 could be one of two things. It could be a starter, whether present or future, but it also could be a trade ship because I've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, if you haven't heard on Take Command or you haven't heard this on, on the show yet, there is, I think, a floating narrative. We talked about it yesterday with Linnell. There's a floating narrative that, oh, you could package 36 and 40 and go up and get into the 20s and take a tackle. Only if you're an idiot. Not because that's not a good idea in terms of packaging picks to go up, because if you package 36 and 40, you get to about pick 13. Not pick 21, not pick 25, not pick 29. Per the Jimmy Johnson draft chart, you get to about 13. And now you have the freedom to add another starter quality body and have another pick that you could package. So now if you do package 30s, even you're too higher of the, the clumped picks, right? Because we have two, obviously, quarterback there. 36, 40, close together, 67, 78, relatively close together. Even if you want to take 36 and 67, players that you were targeting in that range now are still available to you, and you could get a second first rounder. Th this, I would say, I feel stronger now about this than I did a month ago when I feel like I was one of the first people to say that I feel really strongly that they are not going to use all these picks as they currently are that they are going to trade up somewhere. And I think when you look at the, the roster so far, the moves that they've made, the, the landscape of this draft, it just makes too much sense for them not to trade up into the first round and get a second first-round player 
most likely, in my humble opinion, a left tackle. And what this allows you to do is it gives you more ammo to do that and more flexibility to do that depending on where you want to trade. Because let's say 36 and 67, okay, well, that was going to get me up to, to the high 20s. But let's say I feel I don't feel that. The way the board falls, maybe there's a run on some defensive players we don't expect. Some of the tackles start to fall. And you think Tyler Guyton's going to be available out of Oklahoma. I'll use him as an example, right? At 27 instead of 21. Well, now you call up whoever's got 27. I don't have the draft order in front of me. And you go, hey, um, what about 36 and 78 or 40 and 78? Instead of having to give up that 67th pick, And so you can go back a little bit, slightly less valuable on the trade chart, but still enough to get your guy. Or again, if you want to, you can still pull the big one and go 36 and 40 package together and you can go up and get JC Latham. You can go get Amarius Mims. God forbid Olu Fashanu or Joe Alt falls out of the top 10. You can go up and try to get one of those guys. You have extra ammo. That is so valuable in this draft and especially in the top 100 when everybody thinks that's where the stars are in this draft. And the stars, and I should say the stars and starters in this draft are going to be at that point. So very, very exciting uh, to me in terms of the return. Obviously, there is a giant kind of what-if question around Sam that I think we should tackle uh, coming up here in about five minutes um, in terms of like what is he as as uh, kind of, com- what's his commander story? Like now we can write the uh, the commander's O bit uh, on Sam Howell in a way that feels almost silly because it was so so early. But uh, I think that in, in a prediction of, of what he ultimately winds up being elsewhere. Um, so we can get to the, the Howell piece of it in a second. But I think this just continues a prudent uh, way to go about things from Adam Peters and company on in terms of what you get in return. And the last thing I'll say about this for now, um, obviously on till seven o'clock tonight, uh, I'll give everybody again, the rundown of where you can find us is we're in a, a weird digital universe at the moment entirely, um, with Maryland on the radio. Um, but Peters has talked about wanting to build through the draft in order to build through the draft. You need draft picks. And again, whether it's for flexibility or just maybe they do wind up staying put, maybe the guys that they want start to fall and you get the flexibility to take a lot of good football players now that you think are the right guys. And I think that is so huge when we talk about where Washington is because very clearly they don't like this roster. Um, and, it, you know, my big question when they this group got hired was, are they going to watch the tape and go, oh, these guys were not well coached, but we got a bunch of good players? Or are they going to be like, man, I don't know what, uh, the old the old guard was doing in terms of player selection. I think it's pretty clear. There's an element of both uh, bothness to it. Uh, they they didn't keep that many of the coaches, uh, but they also very much seem to want a different kind of player. And I think some of this is we want different players because we don't think these guys were good. And I think some of this is also like we just need the idea that it's fresh. We do not want this place to feel remotely what it felt like last year. And I think a guy like Kendall Fuller, who just signed, by the way, in Miami on a two-year deal is a great example. Kendall Fuller's a good football player. There's no reason not to want Kendall Fuller on your football team unless you want to shake up your room, unless you want to look at your cornerback position and look at Emmanuel Forms and Quan Martin, who contractually are are here, um, unless you want to pop a trade like you just did for Sam and, and try to get something in return. But your best bet is to keep them here, and they're both good young football players, and and put a different vet in the room with them. If there's value in that for the tight end room for uh, Zach Ertz coming in. Or I think a great example, Logan pointed to this when we talked about it on Take Command this morning, is Austin Eckler in the running back room. Who knows what Austin Eckler is going to be as a player? Hopefully, he's Austin Eckler of two years ago, and he's one of the better running backs in the NFL. But even if he's not, if you just brought Antonio Gibson back, it's the same room. Where's the the impetus, the kick in the butt, the fire, the new perspective outside of the coaching staff, but within the locker room, within that team room, for a guy like Brian Robinson. Now, he's going through all the offseason and being like, shoot, I got Austin Eckler on my tail. That dude led the NFL in touchdowns a couple years ago. And he's a vet who knows and sets the example and every single snap, every single rep, every single weight room workout, every single on-field workout will be setting an example for Brian Robinson to watch. And whether he's a hands-on mentor type 
or whether he's just saying like, this is how it goes, that shakeup is real. And obviously the most cost efficient way to shake up everything is through the draft. And now you've added more picks. You have gotten more guys that you think will probably be around on your roster, on your 53 next year. Sam Howell traded to Seattle for picks number 78 and 152, 102 and 179 go out the door with him. When we get back, thoughts on Howell and kind of where he's at at this point in his career. And again, Charles Davis, NFL Network, will join us coming up at 5 o'clock here on The Hoffman Show. This is The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.